In this video, we're going to be taking a look at the Material Library from under the CAM tab. Now, the Material Library is where we store all of our materials for Bobcad to cut. Now, they're pretty extensive lists, but there are some things that are missing, specifically wood. There isn't any wood on this category list over here because we don't have the feeds and speeds calculations for a lot of the woods that are out there. A lot of times when you're cutting woods, you don't really vary your feeds and speeds all that much, but we'll go through an example of adding to the system. Now by default, we have alloy steel, aluminum, carbon steel, cast iron, copper alloy, magnesium, miscellaneous, which is where you're gonna find your brass, bronze, and graphite, Old cutting conditions, this is really useful if you're opening up really old files coming from version 23 and previous, which isn't too often anymore. Plastics, stainless steel, super alloys, this is where you're going to find your Inconel and all that fun stuff. Titanium and tool steel. Now, when we go to a specific category, say aluminum here, we have a huge list of all different material types of aluminum. So we could scroll through. So I'm going to go down to 6061T6 here. And there we have it. Now, if I double click on this, what I can see is the surface footage per minute, the surface footage while tapping, the chip load per flute, and the plunge chip load. Now, currently, I'm looking at the carbide listing for this. If I go down to insert, we'll notice all those different values that pop up. We also have high-speed steel by default. So those are your three default tool types. You have high-speed steel, carbide, or insert. Every material is going to have those three things unless you create a new material, which we'll look at here in a second. If I wanted to modify carbide, I could go in here and change these default settings so that every time I calculate my feeds and speeds, it comes out true to what I want to machine. Now, you could also do customized feeds and speeds based on your tool type and your operation. So what this is saying is if we use an end mill rough for a rough cut, we can run those feeds and speeds. If we were to say end mill finish, but it's still doing a rough cut, we could actually vary the feeds and speeds. You can see the chip loads a little bit smaller. So if I use an end mill finish and I'm cutting this aluminum, my chip load's going to drop to four thou. And it's the same all the way down. We have using end mill roughs for finish passes, end mill finish for finish passes, chamfer mills, thread mills, V-tools, T-cutters, boring tools, tapered tools, dove mills, and lollipops. And then down here, we have all of our different drilling types. So again, you could change those based on the tool material. Uh, we'll go ahead and cancel out of there now. So to add a group and then in turn add materials to that group, we first need to go over to the column on the left and say add group. And I'm just going to go ahead and label this group wood and then hit OK. Now, when we create a new material group, there is no materials in that group. So now what I would do is I'd say, let's add a material. And you'll see by default, it comes up with high speed steel. So if we go over here, I could say this is going to be named maple. And we'd go in and enter the surface footage per minute, the surface footage per minute while tapping our chip load per flute, and our plunge chip load. Now, again, this is just for high-speed steel. That's the only one that gets created by default. So I could then come in and say, I want to add a new tool material, and I could name this carbide, and then hit OK. And I could say, for carbide, I want to be going 1,000 surface feet per minute. I want to be going 500 surface feet per minute while tapping. Chip load and plunge chip load, I'm fine with that. And so I'll go ahead and hit OK. And what we'll see is we now just have two categories, one for the carbide and one for high-speed steel. But we don't have insert because I never added insert to this wood category. Now, another big thing you can do is create a favorites folder. Now, a favorites folder allows you to go into a material group. I can scroll down. I'm not going to use 6061, but I'll go just pass it. I'll say 6063. This is something I use often enough. The reason I don't want to use 6061 is because I don't want to lose it. I use this one all the time, so I like having it inside my aluminum category. But if I go down to the bottom, I could say move to favorites, and what it'll do is it'll create a favorites folder, and it'll put that material in it. Now, it doesn't copy the material. It moves it into there. 
So if you move something to your favorites, it's not going to show up on the list anymore from the original aluminum category. And then I want to go back up to aluminum because the change I want to make is I'm going to click on my 6061 right here, T6. And I'm going to say set that as my default so that every time I start a new job, that's going to be the material that shows up. Now, down below that, we have import cutting conditions, which allows us to open a previously saved cutting conditions file. If we say save material library, it's going to allow us to save that cutting condition file. So we could actually load it into another computer if needed. After we're done setting up the whatever material we're gonna use, when we go ahead and hit okay, that's gonna exit us out of the material library, which is now saved. And that concludes the video on the material library from inside of Bobcad Cam.